visible light that our eyes are receptive to constitutes only a minute portion of the light spectrum. Because our senses are limited, we have access to only 2.5% of the immense range of rays. The smaller wavelengths correspond to gamma rays. Then come the X-rays that we use in radiology, and then the ultraviolet rays from which we protect ourselves. The wavelengths that are beyond the visible are the infrared that allow us to film at night, followed by microwaves that we use to heat our food and radio waves with which we broadcast sound. Some species are able to capture more wavelengths than humans. This should allow them to see other colors invisible to our eyes. Matteo Lehoro is a researcher at the CNRS and works on the cognition and behavior of pollinating insects. He's interested in their color vision and how they perceive the world. I trained bumblebees to gather pollen on flowers that had no color. The bumblebee associated the reward of sugared water, served nectar, to this transparent platform. When I had several foragers trained, I then placed several artificial flowers that had the same shape as the transparent flowers. But this time, those flowers were of different colors. I had a blue flower and a yellow flower that they can perceive, and a red flower that they perceive as black, because they do not have the visual receptors for red. But for them, these were three different colors. And we realized that the different bumblebees chose one of these flowers at random, so one of these colors at random. As there was sugared water on each of these flowers, the bumblebees associated the sweet reward to the color of the new flower. What happened next is that the same forager always went to visit flowers of the same color. This shows the specialization of bumblebees to a certain type of flower based on color, and this is called the flower constancy. The first research aimed at demonstrating the perception of colors by bees dates back over a hundred years in the work of Carl von Frisch. What was very interesting in his work was attempting to separate the color and the shape of a flower to determine what importance the bees gave to each. A water droplet is deposited on all of the colors, but only one color is rewarded by sugar water. With always the same procedure, rewarded by a color form, for example, a yellow star. He taught the bees to forage on this yellow star, got his recruits, then after about 15 minutes, he changed his cards. This time around, he inverted the colors and shapes, resulting in a yellow circle and a green star, for example. What he noticed was that the bees would systematically visit the yellow circle rather than the green star, which shows that the bees give priority to color over shape of a flower when they make a foraging choice. If the bees prefer to rely on the color rather than the shape of a flower, what do we know about how they interpret the image? We know but very little about the circuits in the brain that are involved in learning and visual memory. The first step is to develop teaching protocols using stationary bees, and we've recently developed teaching in a virtual world. We have a bee that is walking on a ball, not moving around, but walking in the same place. And as it walks on this ball, it moves the virtual world, which is projected on the screen around it. What we achieve is a bee that associates moving towards a visual stimulus that is rewarded and avoiding a visual stimulus that is not rewarded. So conditioning and visual memory are a result. The important question today that we'd like to answer is how do bees see the world? We have two major hypotheses. With a compound eye, 5,000 omatidia on each side, they can potentially see the same image 10,000 times. The second assumption is that the information of these 10,000 omatidia will recreate a single image of the environment, as is the case of humans, actually. If it is difficult for us to know how the bee interprets the image in its entirety, 
but thanks to research, it is possible to determine that they are sensitive to other colors than us. We know that these armatidia have sensory receptors and that they are sensitive to the colors green, blue, and ultraviolet. So clearly what these bees perceive visually is a mixture of the colors green, blue, and ultraviolet. Theirs is a different world from ours because we are not capable of perceiving ultraviolet. Technology can open the doors to this forbidden world. To access these wavelengths that are inaccessible to us, Richard Galley has dismantled more than one camera. Cameras are built to be adapted to our vision, to our reality. For this, manufacturers use infrared and ultraviolet filters to block this type of light ray that we are incapable of seeing. Shooting in ultraviolet is what is most difficult. You have to remove all the original filter system and replace it by a blade like I'm doing for this customer. This is split silica, the quartz is here. This is a very white glass that lets all the rays through. And once you have that, the sensor retrieves the widest spectrum possible. After that, you have to remove all the visible and the infrared because you want to keep only the ultraviolet. So with your filter that you're going to put on the lens, you'll remove the visible, the infrared, and you're going to let only the ultraviolet pass through. By removing the filters that block infrared and ultraviolet, we can finally see the rays that are invisible to us. Time to try. We gave Leah one of Richard Galley's cameras that permits observation of ultraviolet rays. She's going to test it in nature to get a better idea of bee vision. Plants are dependent on insects to ensure their reproduction. By foraging one flower after another, they are going to disperse the pollen. Flowers have developed many strategies to get noticed and attract insects. The camera reveals an ultraviolet world, quite different from what we are used to seeing. Ultraviolet patterns are more often found at the flower's center where the pollen is kept. The function of UVs would therefore be to guide the insects and to facilitate the discovery of the precious nectar.